Everything starts with thought. So you must be wise and careful what you think about because that starts everything. You got to be wise and careful. Mr. Shof gave me one of the greatest phrases when I first met him when he said, Jim, every day stand guard at the door of your mind. How important. Stand guard at the door of your mind. So this is called major, what we ponder and what we think about sets the course of our life. It's like the set of the sail that's taking us somewhere. Let me give you a good question to write down. Where are my thoughts taking me? This is a biggie question. Where are my thoughts taking me? These are some of the things you want to make sure of. You might be able to be casual about some things, but here's some things not to be casual about. My philosophy is taking me somewhere. Big question, where? The accumulation of equity will either be there or won't be there. Life accumulates. And I'm either accumulating debt that I'll be sorry for or I'm accumulating value that I'll be happy about. Sir Isaac Newton is generally considered to be the greatest scientist who ever lived. In his later years, he was asked how it was that he, one man, had managed to make such significant contributions to the world of science. He replied, by thinking of nothing else. In its simplest terms, success begins with you exercising your power of choice and using it to take systematic, purposeful control over the thoughts you hold in your conscious mind. Most people spend their lives in a form of sleep. They go busily about their daily activities almost totally preoccupied by a continuous stream of disorganized thought. You've experienced this phenomenon when you've gotten into your car and driven to work or across town, lost in thought, with almost no memory of the trip at all. Many of your habitual routines and conversations take place with a low level of awareness, almost as if you were in a mental fog, and with your having little or no recollection of the particular flow of events. Sometimes this preoccupation is deliberate. You use it to avoid thinking about parts of your life that you'd rather not confront or deal with. Sometimes it is simply automatic. You've been going through the motions for so long that your thought processes are unthinking. You only wake up temporarily when you are shocked or surprised, as when you're cut off in traffic or scared or caught off guard, but as soon as you recover your composure, you slip back into the warm, gentle stream of waking sleep, where your thoughts just flow past amid a continual collage of feelings and images. Now, to become all you can be, you must live more consciously. You must become more alert, more aware, and more awake. You must take more control over your thought processes so that you move in the direction of your own choosing rather than steering blindly on mental autopilot, as most people do. You begin the process of awakening by reflecting on your life, past, present, and future. As an exercise in awareness, imagine that you are here on this earth to do something wonderful with your life to become an exceptional person and to make an important contribution to your world. Imagine that this is all part of a great master plan that has been carefully designed with your best interest in mind, and that every event and circumstance of your life is an indispensable part of a big jigsaw puzzle, the outline of which you can only begin to see when you stand back and start to look at your life from a higher plane or a greater distance. Assume that whatever your current situation or difficulty it is exactly what you require right now to teach you something that you need to know before you can continue on your upward journey. With this perspective, you can see that every experience is a positive experience if you choose to view it as an opportunity for growth and self-mastery. Now, project backward and with calmness, clarity, and a positive mental attitude, think about how every previous experience and situation of your life might have been sent to you at exactly the right time to teach you something you needed to learn so that you could continue moving toward the wonderful life that awaits you. Imagine that the events of your life could not have been otherwise than they were, especially if you were operating on autopilot most of the time. As you stand back and appreciate the incredibly complex interconnectedness of events that have brought you to where you are in life right now, you will begin to develop the perspective of the philosopher. You will begin to superimpose on your experience what is called a sense of coherence, 
an attitude and a feeling that your life is part of something greater than yourself and that everything fits together and happens for a reason. As you think of your life as a series of events and experiences that are conspiring toward your achieving some great goal or making some great contribution to mankind, you begin to develop a sense of destiny, the hallmark of potential greatness as a human being. You must take control of the internal and external aspects of your life and get them all playing in harmony around a central theme of your own choosing. You do this by keying in to the immutable mental laws of the universe. All real and lasting success comes from organizing your life in harmony with these general principles. The first law is the law of expectations. You apply the law of expectations in your own life by confidently expecting to gain something worthwhile from everything that happens to you. Make your life into an adventure. Just imagine if you went around all day believing that something wonderful was about to happen to you. Think how much more positive, optimistic, and cheerful you'd be if you were absolutely convinced that everything was conspiring to make you happy and successful. Your expectations would quickly become self-fulfilling prophecies. The second law is the law of subconscious activity. This law says that any idea or thought that you accept as true in your conscious mind will be accepted without question by your subconscious mind. Your subconscious will immediately begin working to bring it into your reality, making all your words, feelings, actions, and even your body language fit a pattern consistent with your dominant thoughts and your goals. Take time each day to sit and soak your mind in positive and uplifting thoughts, knowing that whatever you dwell upon long enough and hard enough will eventually materialize in the world around you. Here's an action exercise for you. Take a sheet of paper and make a list of all the things that you want to see in your life. Write down everything, happiness, health, good friends, travel, prosperity, recognition. Let your imagination run freely. Now, here's the hard part. For the next 24 hours, think and talk only about the things on your list. See if you can get through one entire day without criticizing, condemning, complaining, or getting angry, upset, or worried about anything. See if you have the willpower and strength of character to think about only what you want for one whole day. This exercise will give you a real insight into where you are in your development, and it will also show you how far you have yet to go. As I read story after story of famous men and women, and as I reflected on their biographies and autobiographies, I was struck by the common thread that ran through all of them. They all seemed to have, or to develop, an unshakable belief in their ability to overcome all obstacles and reach some great height. This belief or conviction seemed to give them powers not possessed by the ordinary person. They went on to accomplish remarkable things, often against overwhelming odds and in defiance of the predictions of people around them. When I left high school and began drifting from job to job, I had no central purpose or aim aside from somehow seeing the world. Like most people, I slipped into the reactive, responsive mode. I took whatever job came along I associated with whoever happened to be around at the time. Instead of planning my life, I just reacted to my external environment and responded to my emotional and physical needs. I assumed that this was all there is. I came to accept unconsciously that what I knew and what I was doing constituted the upper limits of what was possible for me. The best I felt I could do was to react as intelligently and as constructively as possible and try not to make too many mistakes. When my studies in psychology, religion, and metaphysics mentioned the subconscious mind, I neither understood it very well nor did I attempt to use it to help me. However, the more I learned about the mental laws that govern our behavior and determine our results, the more I realized there was a hidden dimension of achievement that I was missing. The more I understood the importance of the self-concept and learned that everything we do on the outside is predetermined by our belief systems, the more I felt I was coming closer to the combination that would open the lock. Then I understood the meaning of human potential. If you and I are using only 10% or less of our potentials for effectiveness and achievement, the other 90% or more must be contained in mental powers we have not yet tapped. I concluded that to get the most out of myself, I needed the access codes that would enable me to get into and harness 
these enormous capabilities. Your subconscious mind is enormously powerful. When you use it properly, it can help you to move more rapidly toward the achievement of your goals and desires than you ever dreamed possible. You can use your subconscious mind for creation or destruction, for good or for evil. You can be a prince or a pauper, depending on the way you operate it. To fulfill your potential, you must learn how to access it at will and use it for your purposes intelligently and constructively. Let me give you an example that illustrates this. My lawyer was showing me through his offices not long ago. He took me into the typing pool where there were several secretaries typing letters and legal documents. Each of the secretaries was hooked into a mini-computer that was available and accessible to all of them. As we left the room, he explained to me that he and his partners had spent more than $100,000 on this computer installation which they had purchased about two years ago. He told me that when it was installed, all the secretaries working there at the time were given training in how to use the computer to increase the quantity and quality of legal work they could produce. Over time, he said, all of the original secretaries had left or gone on to other things. They were replaced one by one with legal secretaries who had no computer training. Because we're so busy, he said, no one has had a chance to go back and train these new secretaries on how to get the most out of our computer system. So now, instead of using this computer for advanced information and word processing, our secretaries simply use it as a glorified typewriter, typing one letter or one document at a time and spending many hours to produce what the mini-computer could produce in a few minutes. Unfortunately, most people are like those secretaries. They work every day with their minds, but they use their powerful mental computers for only the most rudimentary tasks, and then they wonder why their work is so hard and why they seem to produce so little. When I was washing dishes, I was convinced that the only way I could make more money was by working longer hours and by washing even more dishes. I eventually learned that the belief that you can only improve your life with longer hours and harder work leads you down a blind alley. The answer I found was to work smarter, to use more of my mental powers rather than my physical powers to achieve my goals. Successful people are those who have learned how to operate their conscious and subconscious minds in harmony, enabling them to get the things they want far faster and with much less effort. This discovery changed the focus of my efforts and the direction of my entire life. Your subconscious mind is like a huge memory bank. It permanently stores everything that ever happens to you. Your subconscious mind has what is called a homeostatic impulse. It keeps your body temperature at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, just as it keeps you breathing regularly and your heart beating at a certain rate. Your subconscious mind also practices homeostasis in your mental realm by keeping you thinking and acting in a manner consistent with what you've done and said in the past. All your habitual patterns of thinking and acting are stored in your subconscious mind. It is the seat of your habits. It has memorized all your comfort zones and it works to keep you in them. Your subconscious mind causes you to feel emotionally and physically uncomfortable whenever you attempt to do anything new or different or to change any of your established patterns of behavior. Your subconscious mind functions like a gyroscope or a homing beam, keeping you in balance and on track based on the data and instructions that you've previously programmed into it. You can feel your subconscious pulling you back toward your comfort zone each time you try something new. Even thinking about doing something different from what you're accustomed to will make you feel tense and uneasy. Applying for a new job, testing for a driver's license after several years, calling on new customers, taking up a new challenging assignment, or approaching a member of the opposite sex and feeling nervous or awkward, all are examples of your feeling out of your comfort zone. A major difference between leaders and also-rans is that superior men and women are always stretching themselves pushing themselves out of their comfort zones. They're very aware of how quickly the comfort zone in any area becomes a rut. They know that complacency is the great enemy of creativity and future possibilities. So for you to grow, to get out of your comfort zone, you have to be willing to feel awkward and uncomfortable doing it the first few times. If it's worth doing well, it's worth doing poorly until you get a feel for it, until you develop a new comfort zone at a new higher level of competence. Here is a powerful technique you can use to program your subconscious mind. 
Imagine you go to a theater to see an exciting adventure movie. You arrive at the theater 10 minutes before the earlier scheduled movie is over. Instead of waiting in the lobby, however, you go into the theater, sit down and watch the last 10 minutes of the movie. You see how the entire plot unfolds and how everything turns out for the principal actors. You see the problems resolved and what happens to everyone when the movie ends. Then, when the next showing begins, you go back and sit through the entire movie from the beginning. Only this time, instead of being caught up in the suspense and drama of the unfolding plot, you relax and watch the movie objectively. You take time to appreciate the cinematography, the dialogue, the way that the scenes are connected and how the plot unfolds and develops. You are calm and relaxed. You are far less anxious or emotional than you would be if you had not already seen the last 10 minutes because you already know how it ends. This is exactly the same method you use to program your new self-concept and your goals into the deeper levels of your subconscious mind where they lock in and take on a power of their own. The emotional component is critical. It is the calm, confident, expectant, positive emotion combined with relaxation that activates your subconscious and brings about rapid change. Here's a five-step process you can use to implement this method to help bring about any desired mental, emotional, or physical condition. Step one, verbalize and affirm your desired outcome. For example, if you're wrestling with a problem involving someone else, you could say calmly and confidently, this situation is resolved happily with good for all concerned. Your statement should be a clear description of your desired outcome or end state. Don't get wrapped up in detail. Don't worry about the process. Step two, visualize and clearly see the outcome you desire in this situation. See yourself and everyone else involved happy and at peace with the outcome. This will require effort and concentration. Step three, emotionalize your combined affirmation and visualization by creating the feeling that you will actually experience when everything is resolved happily. Step four, and this is the catalyst in the process, release the situation completely. Just let it go as you would if someone you trusted said that he would take care of it and that you need not ever think of it again. And step five is realization, the appearance in your outer world of the solution. The realization or manifestation of your desire happens in direct proportion to which you have completely released all concern for the outcome and turned your mind to other things. This attitude of calm, confident expectation that all will be well is an experience of higher consciousness. Religious people refer to this as prayer, and it is said that prayer is the highest form of affirmation. Ralph Waldo Trine called this state of consciousness being in tune with the infinite. It doesn't matter what you call it, all that matters is that it works with amazing reliability.